now moving on to another soil story that should boil your blood it's from politico of all things uh and it has to deal with first it starts off interesting like the title's misleading but the article is a smear on representative tulsi gabbard it's titled this tulsi gabbard's daredevil act Tulsi Gabbard's slashing debate uh, performance is giving her presidential campaign a badly needed pulse and stoking the flurry of speculation about what her end game is. Get ready for this. Spin right out of the gate. Gabbard delivered a piercing, if inaccurate, appraisal of Kamala Harris' law enforcement record, then turned it into a misleading yet effective online ad push, adding to the, int to the intrigue that she had hushed sideline conversation with Joe Biden, with whom she seems to have little in common politically after the debate. Well, first, you know, guys, correct my memory, Daniel, Paul, and all of you, but wasn't Kamala Harris's records recently purged? Yes, I mean, I mean, gran gran granted, granted. I mean, I'm not saying anything, but it seems like the person who wrote this political article is somehow conveniently forgot that. I'm not saying anything, but hold on, it gets worse. It's all triggered a parlor game back in Hawaii, where the four-term congresswoman is at risk of losing her primary for a House seat as she's stuck at 1% in the crowded race for a Democratic presidential nomination. Among the theories that she's angling for vice president or a cabinet post, that she's weighing a third-party run, or perhaps that she's looking to land a contract as a TV talking head while plotting her next move. Well, first of all, Representative Tulsi Gabbard is not like Mayor Rahm Emanuel who is now on all your news channels. So guess what, everyone, to our entire national and international audience, all of you get to deal with Rahm Emanuel. We had to Lewis that idiot for eight years. Enjoy seeing him on TV. And remember, when Colbert interviewed Tulsi Gabbard, he asked her, hey, you're a Putin puppet apologist. When Rahm Emanuel, who has shut down schools, gotten an exodus out of the city, uh, covered up murders, gets on Colbert's show, he's like, oh, what a wonderful person you are, Mr. Emanuel. No, wait, hold on. It gets worse, guys. So now this is a, a quote uh, from a very important individual in Hawaii. Uh, People are concerned that even if she drops out of the presidential race and runs for a seat again, the second something else comes up, she'll abandon it and abandon us again. In other words, that her run for president is a precursor for her run for whatever, said former Hawaiian Governor Neil Amercrami, who is backing her primary challenger and isn't the only one wondering what Gabbard's objective is. He added, people think she's going to get a media job, that CNN or MSNBC of Fox will want to, will want her as a commentator. Now, Gabbard has stressed this, uh, and this is at least one fairness in this article. Hold on, it gets worse, guys. Gabbard stressed that she's interested in presidential race to win and wouldn't mount a third-party spoiler campaign. I will support the eventual nominee to defeat Donald Trump, she said uh, at a Tuesday event in New York, and I'm working hard to make sure that nominee is me, which is great. I'm glad that she's fighting for the nomination. It's something I want her to do. Now, already she met the donations, the individual donors to secure a spot at the third debate stage. She did well in one poll. She needs to do well in three other polls just so that she's there at the debate stage, and she has to be there. But the article then starts going into how she has, uh, you know, got support from people like Steve Bannon, or even got some praise from the Daily Stormer, or even from David Duke. And the article then goes this, Gabbard denied any connections between her campaign and the neo-Nazis. Mind you, she even went on social media and stated that she did not want those people's support. She did not encourage their support. She doesn't want them. She stands against them. Okay, and there have been numerous times where Hillary Clinton during the 2016 primary got support from some very controversial people, but yet corporate media isn't going to acknowledge that. And yet, again, here's it's something that Tulsi Gabbard said. I have and continue to completely denounce people like David Duke, neo-Nazis and white supremacists, and the evil that they preach across our country. And that's the thing. She has said that. We, I mean, really. Political, you're, you're gonna fail at your job and not even, you know, granted you put that quote in the article, but why are you saying all this stuff on how the Daily Stormer and everyone else is gonna be supporting her? How stupid and inept are you? Then we also go into this and how she is uh, friendly with people like uh, Tucker Carlson on Fox News and how she is uh, st standing against the political establishment. And so the Harris campaign and my new day uh, quote this in the article, views Gabbard as a low polling candidate uh, desperate to break out who has fixated on the California senator to use the attack as launching pad for notoriety. Ian Sams, a Harris spokesman, tweeted unfavorable stories about Gabbard, arguing if the media is going to treat the exchange seriously, reporters should further scrutinize her, uh, her many controversies. And so one of the controversies they're saying is how she um, met with Assad. Okay. That would make Nancy Pelosi exactly the same because she also met with Assad. 
Yeah. So uh, they were okay. So, so mind you, uh, again, we got to quit calling her a Trojan horse or a Russian spy. The corporate media is trying to run this narrative about her, and it's so ridiculous that we are seeing a progressive candidate who's been strong in a lot of progressive policies and issues, and actually has gathered a lot of support, not only from Democrats, but independents and Republicans. And people view her for who she is, and because we have the access to social media, people can look her up and look up her policies and find out, hey, she's not how corporate media, uh, how she, she is not the person that corporate media is being, uh, how corporate media is portraying her. It's, it's ridiculous that we're actually having this conversation, but yet, you know, there's a lot of things working against Tulsi Gabbard's campaign, and mostly it's corporate media running fake news about her and her character. Paul. This is a purposefully misleading spun article in, on so many fronts. And actually, part, part of the point that they make, well, a lot of it is very expected. Oh, she's a Putin apologist. Uh, oh, no, she, she's, she's a an, secret uh, white supremacist. Look at this David Duke lecture. How, oh. how is she a secret white? I mean, right, like, that's all of the insinuation in the spin. Um, but one of the things that's kind of buried in there is a slightly more subtle piece of spin, and that's the insinuation that she's so unpopular that the only reason that she wants to get on the debates is so that she can elevate her profile to do something else. Please God, not in politics. That's, yeah, all, you know, that's what eight, they're saying. And it's just all not All the other true. candidates are going to do the same thing, too. And not to mention, didn't she just get reelected with like 80% of the vote when she got reelected? She's one of the most popular uh, politicians in Hawaii. In Hawaii. And again, I want to reach back out to mainstream media and say, why do you hate the troops so much? Why are you so un-American in by fact, your own words? Why, in are, fact, yeah, why are you taking a veteran who is currently, as this article is written, putting on the uniform to defend you from the terrors outside the U.S. She's a major in She's the a, Hawaiian National Guard, and she is in active duty with her fellow servicemen and women in uniform, protecting our freedoms, protecting the American flag, protecting the United States Constitution. Nowhere, I don't see her just automatically just, you know, protecting Russia. I mean, really, she is defending our freedoms, and we are disrespecting a woman who is token the oath to protect the United States Constitution. And she's a Hawaiian uh, United States House Representative. So uh, this reminds me of a quote I, I just uh, heard about, which was a, an interesting story. A little unrelated, but it'll work the same way. That was when uh, NATO, it was NATO, was the Cold War, and Eisenhower was meeting with de Gaulle. And um, de Gaulle said uh, um, that he wants to pull France completely out of NATO, and he wants all American troops out of France. And Eisenhower looked at him and said, uh, so does that include the 60,000 buried at Normandy? And de Gaulle overcame with embarrassment and walked out of the room and France stayed in NATO. It's always fascinating how we're told to respect the troops, respect the, don't you dare kneel at a football game. But the second someone's position is becoming convenient or lose the military industrial complex money or go against the narrative, it's free game to attack the troops as much as you want. Attack them, let them be fodder for your hatred if they don't disagree with you, and use them as a shield when you think it's right to do so. That's what mainstream media believes in. Nothing, nothing but profitability and backing up the people that own them. And remember, CNN, owned by Time Warner. Comcast, owned by... Uh, ex uh, com uh, Flip that one. NBC owned by Comcast. Fox News for a very long period of time, 20 or 25% was owned by the Saudis. This is simply, again, obvious inputs lead to obvious outputs. Okay. So Daniel, there's something else. Uh, somebody brought this up in the, in the chat. Tulsi took 70% of the vote in a 2018 general election for her district. That's Bern Bernia Bro. Okay, very interesting name. And then Wesley Wiles mentions this. After Tulsi left the DNC in 2016, they turned on her. And it's very important to note that Tulsi Gabbard, before 2016, was a rising star in the Democratic Party. But you know what really made her a true rising star, a true leader, someone to follow and respect? Is that when she saw the clear election fraud that was happening during the Democratic primary in 2016, she had the courage to address everyone in the DNC that it's wrong that the DNC establishment is in favor of Hillary Clinton. One campaign alone. And what did Tulsi Gabbard do? She was second in command of the DNC. She stepped down. She saw something wrong. She didn't want to be a part of it. And she walked away. And she had the courage 
to actually support Bernie Sanders during the 2016 primary. She had the courage to do the right thing, which is something we want all our politicians to do, all our elected officials to do. And I'm pretty sure Democratic voters, independent voters, and Republican voters want the same thing. You want our elected leaders to, when they see something wrong, they do the right thing and represent our values. I mean, this is this is a story I've heard time and time again as a kid. I'm pretty sure all of you heard the same thing too. When you see something wrong, do the right thing. Tulsi Gabbard did the right thing. But what was her reward? Corporate media began attacking her. The DNC establishment began attacking her. And they're still doing it again. They want to take away her seat. And they're calling her a Jill Stein candidate. When in fact, she's running as a Democrat. And mind you, Jill Stein was with the Green Party. Representative Tulsi Gabbard is with the Democratic Party. Two different political parties altogether. Your hatred for a progressive candidate who has actually got support from a lot of people, it still amazes me. And the establishment media is going to continue doing this, continue discrediting her. But on social media, she's getting you know a, a lot of momentum. And I really do hope that she's able to make it on the third debate stage. It Paul. really, really bums me out that it is considered sort of level-headed, good academic understanding of politics to be so cynical as to evaluate every action that anyone makes as purely in their own self-interest and that every action the government should make should be in the nation's own self-interest at the detriment of human suffering anywhere in the world. And anyone who stands up and objects to that cannot possibly be empathetic, cannot possibly actually mean the things they say. What must be going on is that this person must cynically be trying to steal power or do something else in some other way nefariously. And it's and that's essentially what they're trying to smear Tulsi with here and they're being transparently stupid about it. Yep. And so, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we really have to look at independent media to really you know, cover our candidates with respect. And look, we gotta be critical of our candidates too who are running for office, doesn't matter who. But with Tulsi Gabbard, you know, just check out her interview on Joe Rogan. Both or, of or, them. Or, yeah, both of them. Or on Nico House's channel, or Jimmy Dore's channel, or uh, mm -hmm. Michael Tracy's, or um, Jordan Sheridan, or even, uh, what's, this, what's the other person from The Intercept? Glenn oh, Greenwald. Yeah, yeah, Glenn Greenwald, right? Check out those interviews and you'll see who represent Tulsi Gabbard is. Plus, side note, we like to interview Representative Tulsi Gabbard, so that the Midwest people. Come on our show. Yeah, so that the voters here in the Midwest see who you are. But otherwise than that, um, don't believe the corporate media BS because that's what they're trying to give you, neoliberal garbage.